Hello again, YouTube. Big Swole 58 here. And uh, welcome back. On an earlier video, uh, I demonstrated my technique that I use to take my old stainless steel guns from a scratched up, beaded, beaten up state to uh, a bright, clear, uh, polished condition. And, uh, and I demonstrated that using really just, I think, three or four products. Uh, I did, I did a, a graduated wet sand starting at uh, 1,200 grit and graduated to 15 to 2,000. Skip to 2,500 that I normally do because I don't have any of that wet sand paper and up to 3,000 grit. Uh, then I polished it with Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish and then applied uh, uh, my preferred wax, uh, Johnson Paste Wax. And I didn't have a gun to demonstrate it on, but if you look at the video, I took this old Neville Dole can that's made out of, I think, just cheap aluminum and uh, put what I consider to be a clear, bright finish on it. And as I stated before, aluminum is not anywhere near the quality of metal as a... Uh, stainless guns are made out of, so it's a lot harder to, to, to polish to get the same, uh, you know, uh, reflective qualities out of than stainless steel. But again, that process took this can and brought it up to the, uh, to this uh, finish here. And like I said, I call this uh, not quite a, it's not a mirror finish by no means. The light may make it look seem that way, but it's more of just a, a, a clear, uh, bright polish. So today, <clears throat> I want to continue with this, and I want to show you how you can get up to and including a mirror finish by continuing in the same process, but by using higher grades of uh, sandpaper, 4,000 and 5,000 grit. Uh, again, I never go up that high but I have on some previous guns that I've owned. And this will be a benefit to some of those persons that are uh, on uh, a lot of the uh, slab-sided guns with the large flat stainless surfaces like 1911s and some other uh, stainless steel models that really desire to have a mirror finish gun. And I want to show you that you can do the same process and get a very clear mirror finish gun that's going to be professional quality without the professional quality price. So I'm just going to continue and I'm going to do this again all on camera. So there's no, no trick photography, no smoke and mirrors here. Everything's going to be done and captured on video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue uh, first with the wet sand, I'm going to set this this polish just off, probably just out of camera shot, and I'm going to continue with the wet sanding technique uh, on this on this lid and try to bring the polish to shine out even more. So I, to save time, as before, I already cut and wetted my sandpaper, and I like to soak them for at least 15 or 30 minutes. You want them to the point where they're good and thoroughly wetted and so and you can tell this is because it folds over very easily and all you want to do is just wet your paper get it on your surface and continue to wet sand now this is 4,000 grit and <clears throat> one of the things you're going to notice is it's just not making a lot of uh, slurry it's uh, at least not dark slurry because this can's already been polished up to 3,000 grit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish for, for a little while with this 4,000 grit and I believe I'll be able to get a little more gloss out of it and a lot more uh, reflective quality. Now, this isn't anything that <clears throat> that you can't do and really it's the same thing that professional polishers do except instead of doing it by hand they do it uh, with machines and buffing wheels. And they don't wet sand. <clears throat> they just use different grades of 
polishing compound apply it to wheels and it does the same thing the reason why we use wet sandpaper is the wet sandpaper the water keeps the sandpaper from loading up and redistributing the scratches back on the on the surface of whatever it is you're sanding now this thing is getting really really slick you can see the water just lays almost flat on it now it just hardly hardly collects water at all it almost feels oily it's so slick so I'm gonna do this just a few more minutes and as you can see and you can watch the clock <clears throat> this is not taking much time it took about a grand total of nine and a half minutes to take this can from scratched up to the uh, clear to the clear finish and it's probably not it's not a, not going to take much more than that to go to a mirror finish now again i never try to put a mirror finish on any of the guns that i own i did it on i think one gun that i've had and probably got close to a mirror finish uh on two of my taurus uh semis but uh that's only because they have a slap side on them I typically on my revolvers just like a bright clear polish and I think that's all I need on that <clears throat> get a paper towel and dry it off I'm gonna show you how much brighter this finish is than it was when we started now no polish has been added to this so far and you're going to be surprised how bright this is as to where we started. That <clears throat> is almost close to a mirror finish. And that's 4,000 grit. Took about two, about two minutes. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to go to 5,000 grit. Do the same process. Wet it. I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to continue with the wet sand. Now, <clears throat> when you get these, and one thing I want to say, unless, uh, and I, I don't want to not say this, just in case somebody tries this on a blued gun, don't do this on a blued gun. If you do this on a blued gun, you may as well throw it in the trash. Because um, you're going to remove all of the bluing off of it. And so unless you send it somewhere and get it professionally blued again, you're going to have a rust bucket. So this works on stainless. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it on nickel plating because uh, nickel plating is not very thick. And you may sand right through it. This works on uh, stainless gun restoration. Don't do it on anything else. I wouldn't recommend it on anything else. So that's my disclaimer. So again, this is this is so smooth and slick. I can barely hold on to the sandpaper. It almost feels oily. I'll do this for maybe a couple of more minutes. And then I'm gonna stop. Okay, now I'm going to hold on to this piece of 5,000 grit, and I'm going to tell you why here shortly. <clears throat> now, if I had higher grades, I could go to 6,000. But on this, this aluminum can, I'm probably not going to get much more shine out of it as I would if it's, this was true stainless. I'm doing this use just on this just to demonstrate exactly how effective this process is as I stated before trust the process because it really works um, so I'm gonna give you a <clears throat> quick shot now that is almost a mirror finish I had that that is amazing again this was old dull aluminum can and this is how the finish is. Now this is before metal polish was applied. But now I wanna show you something <clears throat> that you may not have seen before. 
but I'm going to show it to you today. All right, this is the muzzle's polish. I'm going to stir it up again. It's starting to separate. But again, I'm going to do everything on camera so you know I'm not using anything that I haven't talked about. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of this muzzle's put on um, put on this on this lid. All right, I'm going to set it aside. <clears throat> I'll set it aside. Spread it out. Now, if you don't know what happens on, when you melt polish and metal, when you've got a good high grade metal polish, and Mother's is pretty good metal polish, it's designed so that the uh, abrasive materials break down as you polish. That's why the more you polish it, uh, the less residue it gives off because the, and you have to apply some more because the, it's designed to break down. And as it breaks down, it loses its polishing qualities, but it becomes finer and finer. Now, once you get past 5,000 grit, uh, you're talking about extremely small micron sizes of abrasives that's in your polishing compounds. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I got wetted paper, but I'm shaking most of the water off of it. And I'm going to take this 5,000 grit and I'm going to polish this mother's into this lid. And what that's going to do is going to take the abrasives from the paper, break and help to break down that mother's polish. And they're going to form their own uh, slurry and it's going to raise the reflectivity of this lid even higher than the mother's would by itself at this point and the 5,000 grit would. Okay? I'm just going to do it a few minutes. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, like I said, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. So, this is just some things that I've learned in my number of senior citizen years. Now, this is water and this mother's has a like an oil carrier, so this is gets this gets really slick. And uh it's not really easy to do, so it's kind of hard to keep it flat. I'm having to hold it with my fingers. But it definitely has a big impact on on the uh polishing quality. Let's see, keep going, keep going. I'm gonna dry some of the water off of it. And I'll do it just a couple of more minutes. Now, <clears throat> that's that. Now I'm gonna dry this off. Try to wipe most of this uh, mother's off that's got the water in it. Now I'm going to polish it with some straight mothers. bring the shine up. Okay, here we go. Now this may show some scratches because I had that paper kind of tipped on its side because it was so it was so slick I couldn't hold it. But it you'll still see the shine quality that I'm talking about. See that black coming off? Alright, that's the last bit of the polishing that's going on on the surface of this can. As long as I'm seeing that, then I know there's some polishing going on. And I'll continue to do this until I see less and less of it. All right, that one's used up. I'll flip it over, apply a little more polish, and I'm gonna keep going. I 
if I can do this with a tin, with a aluminized can like this, man, imagine what you can do with a high quality stainless gun. You have that thing shiny enough where you can shave in it. Okay, let's get another pad. This one's about used up. With those pads turning colors, that tells you right there that there's more polishing being done on this metal. I'm gonna do it just a few more minutes, just, just for illustration purposes only. I'm not gonna go too long because I don't want the video to be too long. Just wanna illustrate what you can do to get a mirror finish if that bright polished finish just wasn't enough. This is starting to look pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Probably three minutes. All right, I'll get some of my garbage out of the way. And let's move the water out the way. Kind of clean up my area a little bit. I wanna leave that in view. I don't want anybody to think I'm doing anything shady. Clean up my work surface a little bit. Now I'm gonna remove this polish from the lid and I wanna show you what it looks like. It looks pretty good. Okay. That's how you get a mirror finish. Now that's a mirror finish. That's a mirror finish. And again, this is aluminum. This was stainless steel. It would be even, even brighter and clearer than that. And again, to protect your finish, you want to add a little wax to it. Whatever wax you choose is is good enough. Uh, I use Johnson's Paste Wax. It's cheap. You can put it on the gun, you can put it on the wooden stocks, you can put it on your leather holsters, uh, your shoes, your gloves, your baseball glove, whatever you want to put it on. It, it, any kind of, basically almost, almost any non-porous material. All right. So, and wax will help to uh, minimize the amount of drag scratches you'll put on a highly polished metal, like in and out of your holster. It kind of helps reduce a lot of that stuff. Okay, let's put a, and it increase, increases the reflectivity of the metal. So just put a little light coat on it. You know, don't need a lot because it's all gonna get rubbed off anyway. All right, put a little light coat on there. You let it uh, set and haze over and then you buff it off. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna give it a few minutes. <clears throat> I wanna talk again about uh, how you can do these things and it doesn't cost you a lot of money. Now I believe most homeowners and most car owners has most of this stuff already around their house. Maybe not all of the different grades of sandpaper, but most people have some kind of metal polish, uh, some type of wax, whether it's Johnson's or some other car wax. <clears throat> uh, I definitely recommend a non-abrasive wax. Uh, there's always, uh, like I said, the flits. There's uh, uh, the uh, Renaissance. Uh, a lot of people like to use. Con any kind of carnauba wax is fine. Uh, I wouldn't recommend beeswax. Um, I think beeswax is mostly good for furniture. I don't think it does a really good job on metal. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, synthetic, petroleum-based, silicone-based, it doesn't matter. Wax is just there to protect the surface and provide uh, some level of um, protection between the elements and the metal. So it doesn't, it's not so important as to what type of wax you use as it is the fact that you just use some type of wax. Uh, metal polish has uh, some metal protection in it because it's either going to be 
It's so either going to be suspended in uh, oil, silicone, uh, or some sort of uh, rust inhibiting material. Uh, but it's just, it's not designed to replace what wax does. Okay. Um, anyway, I believe that's set for long enough. I'm just going to buff it off with a halfway clean towel. Let's see. Yeah, it's dry. And, uh, and you'll see exactly what you can do again. With a little time and a little effort. Let's get that out of the way. I need a little room. A little time and a little effort. And you can take a scratched up stainless gun and have a beautiful, clear, polished, or mirrored finish to it in no time at all. You add up all the time I spent on the last video actually doing work and the time I spent on this one doing this can it was, it was probably less than 18 minutes and you can do a whole gun and probably uh, depending on what gun it is and the size of the gun whether it's a two inch barrel or six inch barrel probably two hours m maximum for dollars, not hundreds of dollars. You don't have to send it off and get it professionally done. All right, so take a look at that. That is a mirror finish. And this is an aluminum can. Imagine what you can do with a stainless steel gun. And that other video, I said you could, in the right light, you could probably read the text on the can. You can read the text on this can. So, <clears throat> wet sand, metal polish of your choice. Uh, doesn't matter if it's Mother's, Flitz, Blue Coral, White Diamond, doesn't matter. You'll get the same kind of results. Uh, apply a nice coat of wax when you're done. And you can transform your stainless firearms into the showpieces that you want to have. And you don't have to send them off to somebody else to do them. And you don't have to spend hours and days doing it. You can spend a couple of hours watching your favorite television show and uh, you can transform that scratched up, aged gun into something that looked like it just left the factory brightly polished and clear. So again, I hope this video was helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's all I have for now. Uh, if you did like it, please click my share, like, and subscribe buttons. And I love reading your comments. And I don't mind criticism, just as long as it's constructive. That's how I grow, learn, and improve. But that's all I have for now. I appreciate you. So until the next time, this is Big Swole 58 signing off.